What's cracking, folks? It is I, CFK Kuro, here to bring you some TEW 2016 WCW. It lives. There are but two more weeks left in the year 2001. Uh, I guess maybe at the last episode of the year, I'll give a recap of everything that's happened. Though I guess, I guess post RK was probably the best time to do that. But whatever. Um, tonight we have a full card of five matches, which unfortunately will not become the norm. I would love to have five matches every week, um, but instead, Thunder is going to get a, an increase in quality and storylines, so it's more must-see television for the few that are a bit lesser, uh, less prominent. I'm going to try to focus on my upper mid-card main event feuds on Nitro, along with title matches and stuff like that. Uh, but let, let's, just, let's just continue on. I'll, I'll save this recap for after the next episode. Uh, tonight, we have the Air Raid taking on Animal and Above Average in a rematch from a few weeks ago. No, uh... Two months ago at check my pay per views. Animal and above average. Mayhem. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We have Booker T taking on James Maritato at the at Booker's request, sort of. I guess I'll more explain during the show. We have the live crew taking on SoFly. We have a U.S. Championship match between Rey Mysterio Jr. and Hernandez. And a main event, we have two of the bigger losers from last night. Uh, Lance Storm taking on Sting. Lance losing his United States Championship match in the Fatal 4-Way with Rey Mysterio, Shane Douglas, and Chavo Guerrero. And Sting losing the main event of Starcade to Wrath, who is still your reigning WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Dog, what are you doing? Please don't rip that. Anyway, uh, stay tuned. All right, folks, we are back. Now, I will mention this ahead of time, but I have a uh, slightly different booking schedule. Not schedule, style. Style, right, right, right. Um, I've decided to increase the amount of storylines that I'm running concurrently I feel like I had way too much filler which means to compensate for that there will be a lot more angles in my shows which means a lot more of patented CFK Kuro angle improvisation I don't plan these I don't plan these out as intricately as I used to anymore I used to write down the entire scripts that took four ever anyway the show opens in the dark room. The seven deadly sins are all sitting in their places with pride and envy sitting to Wrath's left and Grease sitting on pride's, not pride, Wrath's right. The four of them all holding championship gold, Wrath being the world heavyweight champion, pride and envy being the tag team champions, and Greed being the cruiserweight champion. Wrath says... Last night, Evil came home with four pieces of your valuable gold, and it's just the beginning. You cannot stop this. This is inevitable, all right? Now, tonight, I'm certain someone will come out to stake their claim for my world heavyweight championship and I say have at it because no one can defeat evil as you can see all seven of the deadly sins are here and we're strong and we're fierce and we're wrathful prideful envious lustful greedy 
gluttonous and sl sl lazy <laughs> but we have most of what you have to offer and we're going to continue to take and take and take what we deserve and take and take and take what we want until there's nothing left of WCW. <laughs> uh, so afterward, we'll go to commercial break. Comes back and Wrath is down in the ring by himself, right? He says, whoever it is that wants the shots, come now, speak now, or forever hold your deepest desires within. All right, out comes Diamond Dallas Page. Bang. He says, last night, Wrath, I took out uh, Jeff Jarrett. That son of a bitch kept on. <laughs> Wait. I'm, I'm switching characters. What little, what little character I have. I beat Jeff Jarrett in two out of three falls match. And I know that I deserve the next shot at that championship. Wrath, I'm never going to forgive you for what you did to me. In the beginning of the new era of WCW, trying to put yourself over as a menace, as a threat. You're nothing but the same old New Jersey kid that you always have been. Just because you got a different frame of mind now, different attitude, and you carry yourself differently, that don't mean squat. Because to me, you're the same old Chris Canyon wannabe loser. Rock is like laughing, like ha 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 ha. Then out comes... Ken Shamrock with Ted DiBiase. DiBiase says, Wrath, 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 wrath. My client, Ken Shamrock, bested the man who you bested to win that championship. And I feel like my client, Ken Shamrock, did it in a manner that was more convincing than your victory. So, I believe it is time that one of my clients receives their World Heavyweight Championship match that they so needingly deserve. Unless you're afraid, of course, of the MMA, mixed martial arts, UFC, hybrid fighter, the destroyer, Ken Shamrock. Are you Wrath? Of course, Wrath is still laughing. Then out comes... Eric Bischoff. He's like, all right, hold up, hold up, hold up, folks. All right. If you guys want to have this match, if both of you guys want it, how about then Booker T comes out and says, hold up, hold up, hold up. All right. I finished with you, Shamrock, and I finished with you, DiBiase. Ever since I got back after uh, my injuries when I fought Wrath over there, you two have been a thorn in my side. Keep on attacking me. Alright? Well, I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of everyone blindsiding me. Trying to take out the real champ. Shamrock, you cheated last night. DiBiase, you cheated for him last night. And I'm going to get my hands on you. And I'm going to whoop y'all punk asses. Right? And Booker's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, did I say Booker? DiBiase. No, Bischoff. Yes, Bischoff's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait up. Hold up. Booker, Booker, Booker. Booker. Now... It was a steel cage match, am I correct? Uh-huh. Which means there's no disqualification, right? Well, yeah. It's like, so, you lost. I don't care how you lost. You lost. No disqualifications. I don't care if DiBiase shot you. You lost. So, you go back to the line. And you do not get your match with Shamrock. Because I'm announcing right now, at WCW, pay-per-view Named Sin, Wrath will defend his World Heavyweight Championship match in a triple threat match against Diamond Dallas Page and Ken Shamrock. And Booker, you are not a part of it. And Booker is like upset, right? He's getting in, trying to get into, uh, he's getting in Eric Bischoff's face. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just a messenger, all right? Well, I, I did make the match on this. Ignore that. If you want to get back 
at Mr. DiBiase over here, I will allow you some leeway. So tonight, you will have a match against James Maritato, a member of DiBiase's crew, the FBI. Is that good enough for you? And Booker's like, no, no, no. I want DiBiase right now. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Booker, 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 please understand, all right? DiBiase is not an active competitor, right? If you want to match at Shamrock, you'll have to wait until after Sin. But how about this? If you can beat all of Mr. DiBiase's other employees, then I will give you a pay-per-view match against Ken Shamrock uh, with a stipulation of your choosing. Does that sound good enough to you? And Booker's like, I. That's it. And it ends with Booker heading backstage, but he's still, you know, looking menacingly go, 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 at DiBiase and Shamrock. And Shamrock and DiBiase, not DiBiase, Page are busy focusing on Wrath, who has his gold hold held high up in his hand. He's just laughing all menacingly. All right. The first match in about that had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. Air Ray defeated Enroll and Above Average in 746 when Air Styles defeated Mike Sanders by pinfall with an Air Raid after Ric Flair interfered. Sanders was the weak link out of 47. Paris and Styles are just good workers. They work good. All right. After the match, Ric Flair uh, grabs Mike. He says, Pride, Envy. This next, what? At Sin, my boys are officially challenging you guys for your tag team championship because your goal is coming home with the Nature Boy. Woo! And the phenomenal AJ Styles. Woo! And Air Paris. Woo! <laughs> All right. No, keep going. All right. Afterwards, Jamar comes out. He announces that uh, Air Paris and Air Styles will indeed get a championship match against Pride and Envy at Sin. Considering Pride, not Pride and Envy, considering Air Raid have had such a fantastic win-loss record over the past few months and an undefeated pay-per-view streak so far. We also announces that that's not all. Uh, I've been informed by Mr. Bischoff that next week, Pride and Envy will defend their wait, yeah. Pride and Envy will defend their titles against Animal and Above Average Mike Sanders in the main event. Backstage, we have Conan and BG James getting prepared for their match later on tonight against Elix Skipper and Romeo, known as SoFly. Uh, when Skip and Romeo come into the locker room and start talking trash, right? Conan and BG James try to play it cool, but eventually things get a little heated and have to be separated by some of the fellow wrestlers. Okay. Gene Oakland is interviewing Booker T, uh, along with Paisley. Booker says, you know, when the new era started, he won the tournament to become World Heavyweight Champion. That meant that he was the best meant that he proved that he was the best by beating everybody. But when DiBiase showed up and decided that he wanted to use me to make a statement, I just can't have that no more. And each and every month, DiBiase has been getting in my way, my goal to reclaim what is rightfully mine, the World Heavyweight Championship. So I'm going to get DiBiase out of the way for good. I'm going to beat down all the punks that's working for him. And then when I'm done with DiBiase, there ain't going to be a million dollars to spare. All right. Holler if you hear me. I, why don't I just put a random uh, big pop-a-pump? In an extremely short match, 
Booker T defeated James Maritato in 331 by pin wait by yeah by pinfall with a missile dropkick. That could have been an actual good match, but uh, Maritato is what light heavyweight? No, lightweight. No, lower mid Carter. <laughs> what am I talking about? All right. Afterwards, Booker T gets back on the mic, calls out DiBiase. He's like, DiBiase, send out all your soldiers, because I'm coming for you. All right. Uh, backstage, Mark Jindrek is in the locker room. It's his first time we've seen him since the new era began. We last saw him. He was teaming up with Sean Stasiak, who now goes by Pride. Uh... Ernest the Cat Miller comes up to him. He says, hey, kid, you've been gone for a while, you know, and uh, I just want to make sure you're doing all right. Uh, and I know we have a match scheduled this Thursday at this, like, this Thursday on Thunder. So I just wanted to say, you know, make sure you know the ropes, you know, it's been a while. You've been out the loop. But hey, look, Ernest, the cat is right here. Cat's got your back. All right. You dig? All right. Backstage, Chavo Guerrero Jr. and Hernandez uh, are talking about Hernandez's U.S. match tonight. Chavo and Hernandez are discussing strategy. Uh, you know, basically how they're going to cheat to win. Or what, what their plan is tonight, right? They keep it hush-hush. Uh, Gene Oakland interviews Lance Storm. Uh, Lance says, you know, he's incredibly disappointed with himself. He is the premier wrestler in the entire world. There is no one better than him. And yet, two pay-per-views in a row, he has lost to Rey Mysterio. And it's bugging me. It's bugging him. I need to stop switching from first to third person. That's difficult to understand. Uh... This night, he has a chance to get some momentum back by defeating Sting. Uh, if he needs, if he's going to get back into the U.S. Championship hunt, he needs to seriously, seriously get more serious. <laughs> in a decent match, Live Crew defeated SoFly in 9:18 when B.D. James defeated Romeo by pinfall with a crew cut. To Skip and BG James had about the same in-ring rating. Romeo was a bit below, yo. Conan's getting better in the ring. Afterwards, uh, Romeo and Skipper <laughs> attack Conan and BG James and strangles them with their chains. They all got chains, I just realized, right? Uh, Gene Oakland was interviewing the recently debuted Sabu. Sabu says that he came to WCW because he heard that there was a hardcore championship that needed a proper hardcore champion. Someone who's really savage, really vicious, right? Someone who's not afraid to mix it up in the ring. So that's why he's here for the hardcore championship. Out comes Brian Adams and Brian stares down Sabu. He's like, if you want the hardcore championship, Come get it. And then right there on the spot to start brawling. Because they're nuts. Until security breaks them up. Jeff Jarrett, Ric Flair, and Air Paris are backstage. Jeff's a bit, just very upset about losing his match last night uh, to Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, but Ric Flair is like, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. All right. Look, it's no problem at all. You could have beaten him one-on-one -on -one easily. You can beat him whenever you want, right? Jeff, I know a couple months ago, I said you need to prove yourself. And you know what? You've proved yourself. You are the best wrestler in all of WCW, right? You've grown into the best wrestler I've ever seen. Almost as good as me in my prime, but not not, not there, okay? Right, all right. Now, look, Jeff... Sometimes things ain't going to go your way, all right? But if you keep rolling with us, we're going to show you some 
some I'm going to show you the gold all right the tag team belts right and Jeff I'm certain you're going to get your world heavyweight championship that you deserve woo 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 Backstage, Mike Sanders and Animal are preparing for the match next week. Uh, kind of. Mike is, you know, like, hey, Animal. All right. Listen up, Animal. We haven't had a whole bunch of wins lately. Right? Unfortunately, our win-loss record is 50%. Which is it's not above average. That's, that's just average. <laughs> but I'm sure... We're going to get these championship belts and our fortune is going to turn around and we'll be solidly above average. Animal and above average. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. Come on, Animal. High five. Animal kind of just sandbags him. In a decent match, Rey Mysterio Jr. defeated Hernandez in 8.03 when Hernandez intensely got disqualified by... Attacking Ray with a kindle stick that was underneath the ring. Ray Mysterio makes defense number three of his U.S. championship. Ray can literally carry anyone to a decent match. Hernandez has a 36 in ring rating, and the match was a 73. Ray, you the best. God damn. Afterwards, though, Hernandez, Chavo, and Shane Douglas come out to give Ray Mysterio the beatdown. Chavo says, in two weeks, Ray, I've already talked to Bischoff, and I get a title match against you one-on-one. -on -one. And if somehow you make it through that, then Shane Douglas has a match against you at sin. Shane Douglas is like, Ray, you little scrawny punk, I'm the franchise around here, all right? And if you think you can hold on to that U.S. championship while me and Chavo are running around... You've got another thing coming. Because I am the best that WCW has to offer. Right? Let's say that while Hernandez is holding Ray in a... No, he's, he's holding Ray up. And the two just land a... Land, they both land a gut blow to Ray, drop him, and they walk out. Alright. Gene Oakland interviews CM Punk. Uh, about his exceptional 13 week, I think might, might be 12 week. He's had the, he's had the television championship since the debut. Punk says it's been great, defending the belt every single week, sometimes twice a week. But he knows that, you know, one day a competitor is going to come up that will that will take the belt from him. But until that day comes, he's going to defend it with honor all right and maybe a little trash talking too all right jmar announces that next week there will be a six-man tag team match between ray mysterio jr and the misfits in action hugh morris and lash laroe against chavo guerrero jr hernandez and shane douglas uh hugh morris has had some prior beef with shane douglas and it just makes sense to make it a uh, make it a big deal, especially since there's three on one otherwise. And our main event, they don't even click. About that good heat and decent wrestling, Stang defeated Lance Storm in 1537 by pinfall. They have no chemistry, they still got 74. That's solid. Afterwards, Sting makes pulls out his baseball bat, right? He points up. He motions around his waist for the world championship. And then he gets pulled straight back up to the rafters. And that's a wrap. 85 up in 29 regions. All right. So this angle heavy method is working. Baby. What's this? Styles doesn't connect with the fans. Shamrock, you don't know shit. Sloth doesn't connect with the fans. He doesn't. 
Styles is starting to make him. The kid can make us some serious money in the future. See, BG knows what he's talking about. Ain't that right? BG, the truth man. Keeping it 100. Uh, we'll be back with Thunder. All right, we are back with Thunder. The show opens with Jamar Cujo in Mr. Bischoff's office. Of course, Mr. Bischoff doesn't show up frequently for Thunder, so Jamar more or less runs the show. He's bringing in Reno and Big Vito, uh, explaining them the ins and outs of their new job as security for Mr. Bischoff's office. Uh, as he's explaining, you know, customs and rules, like no eating in Mr. Bischoff's office and make sure you turn all the lights off when you leave the room and if you touch any pencils, replace them because Mr. Bischoff doesn't like pencils that other people have touched. Finley comes in, more or less bust through the office. Uh, Reno and Vito do a pretty poor job of uh, security. Finley gets right up to Mr. Not Mr. To Jamar. He says, I want a match against Brian Adams next week. Jamar's like, uh, is it a hardcore championship match? He's like, yes. Well, um, well, considering Mr. Adams is fairly open to all challenges, I will put this in my notes to get Mr. Bischoff. Why the sudden demand for a match? Finley says he would have won his match at... Whatever. Starcade. Starcade's not whatever. Uh, if it was a one on one match, he says Brian Adams always saying that no one around here is any real competition. No one's as tough as he is. Well, I, I know damn well that I'm tougher than he ever has been, ever could be, never will be. So I want to prove it in the ring next week on Monday Nitro. So uh, that's how that goes. So. Complete. Okay, for, for the term. Yep. So they are turning into face staff members. Because I need a face team at the bottom of the car. The Harrises can job frequently, but they can't job every match. Young Dragons, too. Uh, so, yeah. The enforcers are now enforcers for the office of Mr. Bischoff. All right. In about that subpar wrestling and little heat, Sean O'Hare defeated Chili Willie, the local talent, in 417 by pinfall with a Widowmaker. Afterwards, O'Hare says, you know, I can't seem to beat Chuck. All right. And after everything we've been through, I still, every all my own accomplishments, Sometimes I feel like they mean nothing just because I can't beat Chuck. I can't get past that obstacle. So I want to spend a little while to try to find myself. Train a little bit harder. I'll come back better and stronger than ever. So watch out, Chuck. Coming for you. And about that decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat, CM Punk defeated C.W. Anderson in 624 by pinfall with a Pepsi plunge. Defense number 14 of his world television title. All right. Afterwards, a little vignette plays of Takamichi Noku. He says that greed will return his title to him. He wants one-on-one -on -one rematch against Greed for Cruiserweight Championship. And he's going to make sure Greed comes to justice and gets what he deserves. Yep. In a decent match, Misfits in Action defeated the Harris Brothers in 653 when Lash pinned Harris... Don, Don Harris, they're both Harris. Derp. Alright. Afterwards, James Storm and Chris Harris, the uh, America's Most Wanted, come out. They come out mocking Hugh Morris and Lash LaRoe, saying that 
You losers are supposed to be a bunch of misfits, a bunch of combat misfits. Look like nothing but a bunch of clowns to us. Isn't that right, Chris? Well, yeah, James. Most importantly, I see a bunch of guys who can't beat any real competition. Only beat a bunch of losers like the Harris brothers. No relation, by the way. Uh, so basically just smock them from the top of the ring. A Hugh Morris and Urson would come on down. And James Storm and Chris Harris were like, I don't got time for clowns like you. We're real cowboys up here. And a decent match. Mark Jindrick defeated Ernest the Cat Miller in 841 by pinfall with a mark of perfection. And after the match, Mark Jindrick, he's posing, you know, celebrating. Uh, Ernest the Cat Miller comes up, or gets back up, going for the handshake. But Mark Jindrick slaps his hand away and then puts Ernest in another mark of perfection. Leaves him laying out in the ring. And Jindrak stands posing. Needed more women. I need a female interviewer. Because I can't have Oakland interview on Thunder. Because he's on the announce team. Hmm. What is this? Ernest says Ron can't sell worth a damn. He's right. And Thunder has a 10. 1.6. So, I'm going to real quickly scouting for ringside worker, female, looking for good microphone skills to hire, can work in the USA. Hmm. Egotistical, selfish, ruthless, social, mercenary, bold. Microphone's not that great. Okay, so go with decent on camera qualities. <sighs> I could bring in Tammy. But she'd be better to bring in when I when Crandito comes back from uh, whatever. Sensational Sherry. Strong just like a Bischoff. Plus she's still good friends with the book. But she's not an interviewer type. Can't bring her in. I, negative influence. Yeah, no. Nydia might bring in for something different. Nicole Bass, no. Nancy, no. Mickey. Lillian Garcia. That'd be fitting. 56 for 75 star, I mean, sex appeal. That's solid. If I could find anyone better than that, I would love to bring Daphne in. If I have to bring Daphne in for something good. Because Daphne's not just a ring announcer. Chiller to Melissa. 80, 28 now. Alicia Webb. Hmm. I'm going to sign. <laughs> I'm going to sign Lillian just because. Uh, let's go for a two-year deal. All right. And with that, that is the end of the show. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll be back with some more Thunder and Nitro. But more importantly, back with some more TEW 2016. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye-bye.